thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, these cases uh, were filed with a great team effort, and at the center of that team uh, is the Marshall Islands. And without the Marshall Islands being courageous enough to want to take this on, uh, there would be no cases. So the legal team helped. The Nuclear Age Peace Foundation helped as consultants, but it was the Marshall Islands that deserve the credit for what's happened here. I've been coming to these uh, review conferences and preparatory committee meetings for review conferences for nearly 20 years. And I, for the last many years, I felt that what's absent here is a sense of boldness, or is boldness. I don't know about many of you, but I, I feel tired listening to tired statements that are repeated, PrepCom after PrepCom, review conference after review conference, and the words uh, don't ring true. Sometimes the words are good words, but nothing seems to happen that's really significant. And that's particularly true in terms of keeping the disarmament promises and obligations <coughs> of the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Um, I want to <coughs> stress that in addition to the ICJ cases, there's also there's also the U.S. case that the Marshall Islands has brought because, in part, because <coughs> the legal team, uh, and as Vaughn has explained, many countries don't accept the compulsory jurisdiction of the court. The U.S. case, the U.S. is so central to the disarmament effort that it, it was felt necessary that in the event the U.S. was simply to run away from the case in the International Court of Justice, that they couldn't do that in the United States District Federal District Court. They need to answer the complaint. Now, maybe they'll raise jurisdictional issues, maybe not. Likely they will. But hopefully, in one of those two venues, the case against the United States will be heard. And, I, and it's my hope that the case against all nine nuclear weapon states will be heard, but that's very much uh, will be a result of, of whether those six countries that Vaughn mentioned that don't accept the compulsory jurisdiction of the court uh, decide to stay in and argue their case before the court and the world. So, so I was talking about feeling that much of what goes on at these <clears throat> meetings is tedious and not, not so, uh, doesn't ring so true. And I've been thinking that something bold was badly needed. And I think that this uh, lawsuit, this set of lawsuits by the Marshall Islands is very bold. It's extremely bold. And I think it has the, op the possibility of changing the game. So that's, that's my hope. And I'm very happy and, uh, and very uh, pleased that the Marshall Islands took such a bold step. Now I'd like to talk for just a minute about ways in which these cases might be viewed. Vaughn mentioned the uh, framing of David versus Goliath. Well, in this case, it would be the Marshall Islands as David and nine Goliaths representing the nuclear weapons states. But there is a difference in the biblical story of David and Goliath and what's happening here. And that difference is that the Marshall Islands doesn't have a slingshot. They only have the law. They only have the law. Or, or another way to view it is rather than putting a rock in the slingshot, they're putting the law. So they're throwing the law up at the nine nuclear Goliaths and 
hopefully, as David did, they will prevail. Another way to view the cases is The Mouse That Roared. It's a Peter Sellers movie. And in The Mouse That Roared, a very small country called New Fenwick, an imaginary country, was running out of money and they decided the best way that they could uh, replenish their treasury would be to declare war against the United States, lose, and get reparations. <laughs> and somehow they managed to win the war uh, to, their, to their surprise and everybody else's. But there's also an important difference in this case in the Marshall Islands versus the nuclear weapons states that, that doesn't comport with that description. First, the Marshall Islands uh, didn't go into this expecting to lose. They went, in, <clears throat> they went into it expecting to win. So that's a difference. A second difference that's really significant is the Marshall Islands are not asking for compensation in these lawsuits. There's no request for compensation. There's no personal gain for the country in bringing these lawsuits. The, the, the gain is only in the satisfaction of doing what is right and doing it for the global community. And in fact, more than the global community, doing what is right for all humanity. They're trying to seek, <coughs> to see, seek that the obligations that were made by the nuclear weapon states, the promises that were promised are fulfilled. And one other way of framing the case that I think is important is there's a saying, at least in the United States, called friends don't let friends drive drunk. <laughs> it means if you're the friend, if you're the friend of someone who's been drinking too much, you don't just say, well, go ahead and drive, continue to drive on. Uh, because it's dangerous for that person and it's dangerous for others as well. <clears throat> so I think friends don't let friends drive drunk is a good analogy with this case because the Marshall Islands is a friend of the nuclear weapons state of the United States and the other nuclear weapons states. So they're bringing this lawsuit on the basis of friend to friend. It's not hostile. It's only saying, do what you said you were going to do. All right, having said that, let me just say that there are things that people in this room can do to support the Marshall Islands. First, um, you can visit nuclearzero.org. It's a website that's set up to uh, encourage participation in these cases. If you're, an, if you're a civil society organization, we want the support of civil society organizations, and you can sign up. Rick, Rick Wayman, raise your hand. Rick, Rick is here in the room from the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. If you'd like to talk to him about signing up organizationally, you can do that. Um, also, you can sign up as individuals. There's a short, powerful statement of support for the Marshall Islands at the Nuclear Zero website. Um, also, civil society organizations can give encouragement to other countries to make supporting statements of the courage of the Marshall Islands or to join them in court as uh, applicants in the International Court of Justice or interveners in the International Court of Justice or co-plaintiffs in the US case or submitting uh, amicus curiae briefs in the US case. So there, there's a lot that can be done. And uh, I really want to encourage you, if you admire 
and respect what the Marshall Islands has done in bringing these lawsuits. Don't be silent. Stand up by their side. I think the Marshall Islands have done a great thing. I think they've re-enlivened the uh, situation here at the Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conferences. And in general, this, the, this, is, this is a global event that the Marshall Islands have set in motion. And I hope we won't leave them standing out there all alone. I know we'll be standing by their side. And I know others of you already are, and I'm sure that more of you will want to stand with them as well. So, in conclusion, Tony, again, thank you. Mahalo. <laughs>